got about two minutes before uh, Chris is good to go. Good. So that's how that's going. Smart, Tori, smart. Thank you for enabling uh, slow-mo on my chat because it has 700 people in it right now. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> um, 700 people? Yeah, Geo Daddy your... gets people. Okay, yeah. Faster. We got, people we got people that want to see Geo Daddy. They're here. <laughs> you don't have to say it like that. I know hey, we're gonna man, have, we have a lot of explaining to do. Than the other thing we could call That's him. true. We're gonna reveal all the horrible things that's been going on on the internet. Keith. I, I'm actually Keith, fairly certain Keith, Keith can already hear us, by the way. So it, oh, he, yeah. he already. I apologize ahead of time. What's yeah, going on? I, I mean, Eddie, hey, you've worked with head. Keith how many times? I've oh, I don't know. I've worked with Keith. I think he's used to me by now. Yeah, he my, knows you. He's used to you and your dumb ass humor. Okay, Got him. Yep, yeah, yeah, Zulu. Thank you. Thank yes, you, the, bir the bird is here. The bird agrees. The bird agrees. She's being very nice after biting the shit out of oh my, my fucking goodness. neck earlier, so. Hello, hello! Hey, Chris. Oh, hey, it's Chris. Hey, everybody. Uh, today is a big day here on the channel. In fact, you could say that we're kind of at a crossroads of some awesomeness here in, within the game at the moment. Uh, we recently just had the release of 1.1. Um, which is the first major post-launch content drop that we saw. Uh, and with it came an unquenchable thirst for the CEO of GEO, <laughs> Mr. Zhang Li himself. <laughs> and we're yet but just a, uh, roughly a week away from the 1.2 drop, um, which sadly means that it's you know, the waning of the Gentry of Hermitage banner uh, featuring the Geo Daddy himself. So I thought, what better way to bid a fond farewell than to have the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Zhang Li himself, join us for a send-off and what I like to call banner banter. And now, before <laughs> you get all worked up, okay, let hear me when I say this: I will have order, or you will suffer the wrath of the rock. Okay. So, without further ado, oh please rise God. and show your love in chat for the dulcet tones of the incomparable. Keith Silverstein. Uh, hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I resist coming on and using my natural voice. <laughs> but, uh, because uh, a lot of people don't hear my natural voice, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh and uh, and thanks. Thanks for coming on here, man. And, and on top of that, though, I also want to throw a shout out. We got all of our A. Hey, Oh man, somebody rated with me at Party 5, Nintendo, thank you. Um, Party 5. I just want to say uh, thanks for everybody uh, that uh, that is also in here with us. We're going to be having a couple other voice actors join Let's us and ho probably hop in throughout somewhere. the night. But we've got the voice of Chi Chi, Christy Kate. We've got the voice Hi. of Karina Becker, which is Paimon. Wait, the voice, the voice of Karina Becker? Oh, yeah. I've yeah. graduated, guys. I'm officially Paimon in real life. <laughs> <laughs> you have become, you've, you've definitely yeah, updated. Paimon now voices Paimon. Karina Becker. Yes, the voice of Paimon, Karina Becker, Becker, sorry. And then we have Christian Bonas, the voice of Man Dressed as Worker, okay? He's a, he's a staple to this world. Um, we've got Corey Yi, which is Cat Daddy Draft. Yo. And uh, we've got Eddie, uh, the engineer, uh, the guy that holds it all together for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, thank you for I hanging out with us. That's oh what my I God, was saying. Thanks, thanks for inviting me. I'm happy to hang out with you guys anytime. Yeah. Well, let's kick things off first. Yes, let's yeah. do that uh, first will, before questions I, come, guys. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to do here is two things. One, uh, what I'm thinking about doing here, uh, Keith, is I'll be your yeah. Sherpa for the evening. I'm going to show you what the Geodaddy is all about, what Zhang Li is all about. I'm going to show you his banner. I'm going to show you his layout, his, his talents, his constellations, and what the, all those things mean. And then we're going to see him in action, kicking some butt. So. Sounds uh, great. I'm all for it. Uh, and and to start it off here, um, I just want to give you a, I just want to wish you a, uh, a, a happy birthday in advance. It turns out uh, your birthday is on Christmas Eve, is it not, good sir? That is true. That is very true. Damn. Well, happy birthday. It's creeping up. Happy birthday. It is creeping up. I know it. Crazy. I'm gonna be 32. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's uh, going right, we all like awkwardly laughed at that or that. <laughs> We're all just like so normal normal with Keith already that it's just like, oh yeah, this is funny. We already Wait, called him Geo Daddy, like So this is your this is your uh, this is you, okay. man. This is you. Now I gotta point out this horribly disgusting rat tail that you have here. 
not loving that. Uh, and wow. the cross, the tips cross too, which is, which is, yeah, but, but we'll look past that. We'll look past that. Um, it's, that's actually natural. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's kind of like layers of the earth, you know, it just keeps revealing more and more as you dig down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, this yeah, my, is him, I, and my daughter's hair does that in the back, so it's it, that that can be natural. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah good. that makes sense. Good. Yes, uh, we have Sarah Miller Cruz in here. Yes, Sarah Miller Cruz. <gasps> hey, Sarah. Uh, Sarah is the Keith is the uh, voice of the female main player character in the game, uh, Lumine. Excellent. Hello, Sarah. How you doing? Good. How are you? There she is. Fantastic. <laughs> That's what you look like. That's who you are. I'm going to be playing as uh, as Zhang Li uh, this evening uh, to give you a little sampling of what this this gent can do. I will say I did know what he looked like already, Chris. Oh, of that, course, that much <laughs> of course. <laughs> but, uh, but did you see it in you know a fully 3D uh, slow spin with the rat tail and everything? Probably not. Okay. Yeah, there's some physics in that hair. Ah, uh, bird. You know what? You know what's great about what you just did? Um, in video game world, that makes total sense. But in real life, if you just prance around a fountain like that, everyone would be like, "What the hell's wrong with that guy?" <laughs> but no one gave it a second thought because it's the game. Whatever. A Anna did flinch when you jumped on her, so you know that's. Uh, that's well, it's because you weren't D, Luke, bro. Do I have any more? Uh? Um, <laughs> no, you, you do not. Of course not. Question. Will someone, uh, will can... someone spot me, please? <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I you got parasite you. Parasite on society. <laughs> yeah, she, oh, you say the sweetest thing. I know, I do. <laughs> Here, cooking a little chicken, Madame. <laughs> I gotta. Uh, so, are are we ready to take some questions now? Yeah, let's do it. Let's... Who else do you voice, Keith? Um, in this game. Or in the or world. In, the, in general. I, oh, that, that's maybe easier to may, Pick from your top top yeah, choices top there. Top choices. <laughs> well, I voice Heesoka from Hunter Hunter. Uh, Hantorgen from Overwatch. <laughs> um, Hawk Moth from uh, Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, Miraculous. Fly away, my little Akuma, and evilize her. <laughs> And a few others, uh, Vector the Crocodile in the Sonic the Hedgehog series, uh, Hunk from the Resident Evil series, Zasalamel from Soul Calibur, uh, and stuff like that. Don't forget Ziggy the Rapping Zebrasaurus. Uh, yeah, for, for my Sesame Street fans out there, yes, I was Ziggy the Rapping <laughs> Zebrasaurus. This is very true. It was amazing. I also have played uh, Swordman number five and the guy in red shirt B. I relate to this so hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> Christian plays the character man dressed as worker in, in Genshin. It's become a meme. Yeah. That's <laughs> literally his name. And well, I, if, I play if uh, if, if, Jetfire. You guys got to watch the uh, new Transformers, War for Cybertron. This on Netflix. I'm Jetfire, and uh, second season comes out on the 30th, I believe, of this month. So it's coming up soon. I've got a question for you, Keith. Shoot. What's, what's the, the uh, what are some what are some uh, holiday traditions amongst the the Silverstein uh, household these this time of year? What do you do holiday wise? I mean, it might be a little different because of the COVID years and stuff, but you know uh, what's going on. What do you do? Is there anything specific that you guys like to do as a fam, or uh, you know, or, or or find yourself doing every year? Well, we celebrate um uh hanukkah and christmas my family's always been a, a mix of lots of different religions and oh nice and and everything and ethnicities and ideas and cultures and all kinds of fun stuff so we celebrate both tonight's the final the eighth night of hanukkah so for Happy the kids hanukkah. we always make sure thank you so much we uh we make sure they have a gift every night so they get a, a minimum of eight gifts for hanukkah and uh you know we do the traditional lighting the candles we say a prayer and then the, the kids and i sing and dance around the house briefly and my wife just laughs at us. <laughs> That's cute. I love it. I mean, I'm I love it. Needs to be Hanukkah for that to happen. For her to, for her to laugh at us? No, no, that's true. That, that has nothing to do. She, she would do that any given Tuesday. So, <laughs> hey, ma'am, you can climb. I know how to climb. And, oh, uh, yeah. So, you know, we've got a menorah and a Christmas tree in the house right now. Oh, my God. All right, for, for, for the Hunter Hunter fans out there. Well... It looks like that poor man's arms have turned to flower petals. Amazing. <laughs> nice. That's a great one. Yeah, I think I most always people can't. The people can't come up with questions. They just keep freaking out in the chat more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of all caps. 
<laughs> well, well, let me let me let me throw okay, another wait, one at you then. Give me weird questions. I like weird questions. Ooh, so, you want weird you, 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 was you that climax weird? request not weird enough for you? Or? <laughs> I got a, I got a weird, I got a weird question for you. That's, I got a weird a question for you. Yes. How do you? Okay, so Zhang Li drops right, and like I Zhang said, Li people drops. people oh. are searching for Zhang Li, right? I mean, Zhang Li's got. The, you know, let me show you a little something here. Hold on a second. So Zhang Li's got this, where he will. Uh, He'll, he'll throw that sucker up and if you do right. it on like a if you do it on some kind of like a uh oh, no. i don't know there you go it kind of like goes at an angle and it sometimes yells rise it's a very sexual sexual thing but like <laughs> my, question, yeah, my, question, my, my question is you've kind of played now two you know kind of fan sexualized uh in some regard characters between torbjorn who uses the geo element to uh, spray some molten hot lava, and now Zhang <laughs> Li, who chucks down <laughs> these pillars, you know, is this is this just like uh, what's going on here? I mean, I feel like we're we're getting some themes. Dude, uh, Torbjorn's clearly the sexiest of all the characters you voice. He... I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. People always underestimate the engineers. <laughs> <laughs> I relate to that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely the sexiest, and uh, and we knew that at Blizzard. I remember we had a conversation about how sexy he was and whether he was too sexy for the game. And I remember it was days of <laughs> too just, uh, sexy for the game. Just too sexy. <laughs> he's got like eight hundred kids. He's the only one who's so, managed to so to pull that off. They have so. to pull it back so that it was still rated teen instead of instead of rated M. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you're right. He, I think he has the most kids of any of the other characters. I, I think so. I got another I question for who would win, Hawk Moth or Zhang Li in a fight? Ooh. Huh. Well, uh, let me be completely logical and say that uh, so far, Hawk Moth has only lost. <laughs> so, uh, for those who watch the show, he's never won. So, I would say <laughs> Zhang Li is going to would win. Because <laughs> Hawk um, Moth has yet to win, right? On I mean, technicality, I mean, I mean, really, more than yeah. anything. I mean, <laughs> I, I won't I won't say too too much, but I'm I'm just saying there there is one of which that is um has a spoiler that would determine the answer to that question very easily. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is bet for the underdog. All right, I know where I'm betting. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, so Hawk Moth would win? Hmm. Okay. I, I mean. Oh. Oh, well, it depends. Would Hawk Moth use his powers at, like, because, you know, he's a businessman, right? He needs rich. He has way more money than Zhongli. The there is, there is a way that that could... Zhongli is you know, a god. Zhongli doesn't have any <laughs> money! And that also hasn't he, stopped Zhongli from accomplishing okay, lots of great things. spoiler alert, though. He also lost <laughs> his Sorry. gnosis. I'm just mm. saying. This is oh, true. Sorry. And he didn't so, lose it. Technically, he gave it. He away. gave it away. Yeah, because if a of man a is a god, if a man is a god but he doesn't have any money, he could. He he's no good. Mm -hmm. Ooh, is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's what Paimon says all the time. <laughs> that does sound like something Paimon would say. Um, Maybe he's just smart and he gets everybody else to pay for everything. I mean, that's true. Uh, yeah. Somebody asks if you've ever uh, if you've ever had to do a higher voice than Eric from ZT, uh, ZTD. What is ZTD? What is ZTD? Oh, from um, I know what it is. Like now, I can't think of the name because I've never heard it called that before. Uh, Zero time dilemma. Zero time oh. dilemma. Yeah. People get so familiar with these games, ZTD. I'm like, what is that? Is that is that K-pop? Are they a band? <laughs> I don't know. Um, probably. I don't think he was that. I don't remember him being that high, but uh, he was probably younger, so he's probably you know in a little bit higher range somewhere in here. But yes, I've done. I came on with a higher range, so I have voiced higher range characters, especially when I was younger. <laughs> um, you mean before, before you were thirty two? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> great minds. Great minds think alike. So we got another question. Was it awkward to record some scenes in Hunter Hunter? Um, well, yes. again, this is this is probably a reference to the same. Oh wait, wait, no, this is about Keith, not me. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> Eddie, I know you were there too, but God damn it, this is about Keith right now. <laughs> okay, well, it could have been about for Eddie, and I, I was just like, oh crap, am I jumping in when I shouldn't? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was never uncomfortable, but the scene in question that we talked about earlier, when he 
enjoys fighting Gon as much as one could, I guess, enjoy fighting anyone. Um, I remember I did one take of it, and I just went for it. And then I saw our director, Tony Oliver. I said, hey, Tony, do you want a, a second pass? you want a safety? And he was like, nope. <laughs> 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 nope, nope, nope. Amazing. I was like, cool, cool. And we, we moved on. So I didn't have to linger on that scene uh, for, for too long. But it was interesting. Uh, that's one of the most fun things about Hisoka is I never knew uh, what the script was going to bring because I had not seen the series beforehand. So it was always a surprise. I will have order. So, um, I did have someone ask, uh, you know, if you're close with the other the Overwatch cast, though. And, you know, I'm, I'm curious about I love Overwatch, one of my favorite games. So I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, um, I, I think we all there's a very there's a family feeling. I mean, we all feel very blessed and lucky to have been a part of this game. And a, a, a good chunk of us, at least the original cast, all met uh, after shortly after the game was released. It might have been the year anniversary, possibly. And of course, mm -hmm. we run into each other at cons and, and what have you. And we hang out when we have free time. Um, Theo, who plays uh, Zenyatta, lives literally like two blocks away from me. So when oh, pre-COVID times, I would go over to his house and swim all the time. And now now I've put in a pool, but uh, I, can't, I can't have anybody over <laughs> yet. <laughs> oh. Damn it. <laughs> I love Theo. Damn you, COVID. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think, uh, I think in general, we all get along very well. Um, I think some, some, you know, some of the cast are like best friends, but I'm, I'm always happy when I get to hang out with anybody. So anybody from the yeah. cast well, right now, actually, it would be anybody like literally. <laughs> Especially now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Now I, anybody, I'm like, Oh, my worst enemy. How are you? What's going on? <laughs> What's talk? going on? <laughs> my worst enemy. Hey, well, how's it going? Come over, play some games. It's like, if I, if you want, I could read what it sounds like. And then you could do it in your thing. You're just basically it's Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Oh, damn! Ooh. It even had it even had that that little that touch of gravitas that that kind of bittersweet longing. It was all in there. It was all in there. Yeah. I miss Osmanthus wine, you guys. Th thanks for rubbing that in. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, yes. somebody really wants you to say for the memes in your normal voice, if you want. In this is what they want you to say. In terms of Mora, we have no Mora. Doesn't need to be in in I any voice I, but your I, own. In terms of Mora, we have no Mora. How's that? So I got one where it says, Can he try to do a Paimon impression? Ooh. Oh, give me, Karina, give me one of your lines appropriately said, and yes. I'll, I'll back it up. Paimon is not emergency food. Paimon is not emergency food. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not bad, dude. That's yeah. not bad. That was good, so, dude. That was so good. <laughs> as close as I get. Um, that was and then we good, got dude. the question, what is your favorite voice line as Zhongli? My goodness. I, oh, I should say rise because it's so short. <laughs> <laughs> I like all his talk about contracts. Here's a line for oh, you. Yeah. To get people to abide by a contract and act in accordance with the guidelines set out within is simply to ask them to respect the concept of fairness. It is not a large request. How are there those who still do not understand such simplicity? There you go. There's... There's my oh, current paper line. That was pretty great right there. Oh, that was good. Mm -hmm. That was great. Uh, somebody yeah, asked, John how was... did you remember all of that? Uh, it's weird. I Some characters, <laughs> I can't even remember what their voice was. And then other times, I'm just like, oh, I've got a paragraph I know of that person. So, yeah, go figure. Mm -hmm. There's no hey, thanks for the host. Sweet. Um, somebody That's... asked, how did you hear about Genshin Impact? Well, if I mean, Chris, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Uh, I believe I got a call from my agent, literally, like, can you get to whatever studio in, you know, like an hour and a half? <laughs> I mean, oh I, nothing was booked. They were like, are you available? Because they want you to come in. And and, and I, it was like a read for, but it was like, it was literally a, a gig. So I came in and uh, Chris was there. I came, you know, and some producers yeah. and whoever else was in there. And it was, they, they literally said like, hey, 
we love you as a particular character in, in Bleach, I think it was. Um, can you read for this character? And we'll just do a whole session. You'll record. You'll get paid either way. And then if you if we use it, you'll be back. <laughs> I think that's what happened, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, they didn't use it, so. Yeah. It was originally yeah. That's a good It was originally for Man Dresses Worker, but uh um, But no, it was it was yeah, it was one of those things where like we brought because again, it was one of those situations where they had an idea of a voice that they kinda liked and wanted to hear. Um and I was like, Keith's the guy, so we brought Keith in and of course he just crushed it like he usually does and walks out of there. He had that that uh They're, one of the loving nicknames in the community is Big Dong Zhang because he has that. Whoa! You know, that, he that, has the pillar. Yeah. He's got, the, he's got <laughs> oh, the, the, the that pillar. big pillar energy. That, that big, big pillar energy. Rock hard pillar. You know, just okay. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. You were, you were you were going too far there. Right. <laughs> There's no such thing. Um, the joke went on too long. <laughs> right. Oh God. Somebody uh. would like to know how you got in voice acting. Uh, it's so long ago. Do I even remember? Is the question. <laughs> no, I um, I, I I never thought I was going to be a nine to five guy when I was younger. I mean, I, I I did wait tables and do things for a while, um, and I I'd been taking acting classes and doing acting since I was a kid and a few other things, and uh, I got a call from my uncle who uh, had written this poetry that was meant to be read in in multiple voices. And he called me up because he knew I did voices and stuff like that. And he asked if I wanted to audition. And I think he had me call back on his answering machine just to, you know, read some some of the poems in different voices. And I did that. He cast me, but he booked an actual studio. And there was another actress there. And we recorded very professionally. And I, I had never done that before. I, I had never even considered doing voiceover. And I kind of fell in love with it on the spot. So uh, that was it. I was hooked. And then it was like, okay, uh, I need a class. I need something. What do I do? So then I was on that quest everyone else is on. <laughs> you know, where it's like, how do I get into this? What do I do? Yeah. Um, but uh, so I took a bunch of classes. And uh, I uh, my first real gig, I call it real gig because I had a couple of other smaller gigs that, that did pay and they were cool. But the first one I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. And I lucked out was in uh, 2000. I got to work on the last uh, Chuck Jones project with Warner Brothers. Wow. Which was wow. called, it was it was a webtoon called Thomas Timberwolf. And uh, I got to, I mean, it was just, a, it was just amazing. It was, it was so much fun and such an unbelievable thing to be working on. And uh, so, yeah, so I was, I was in, that was it. I was like, this is, I'm never stopping now, so. Um, and my next question is, uh, what is your favorite character that you have voiced? Ziggy the Rapping Zebrasaurus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I don't, here's the thing. It's so hard to have a favorite character. And, uh, you know, I, Karina, you know this. I mean, it's like, I, mean, I assume you'd feel the same way. It's like, uh, sometimes uh, some characters you love because they were so fun to play. Like, mm -hmm. at the time you're recording, you just love this character. You love being that character. Other characters you really build a relationship with because the game is so popular and so many people love this character that it, it even i mean you may have liked the character before but you can't help but love the character because it's so important to so many people yeah it's a community and, thing at that point <clears throat> yes and then there are characters i guess who um boost your career in one way or another so in other words like i could say like you know kimi maro when i worked on naruto and i played kimi maro that was huge it was the first time i worked with studiopolis and it was the first time i worked on a show that i'm like i know what this show is you know it wasn't some new show it was like no this exists and it's a it's a popular show so uh so there's so many different some of my favorites though we've already talked about i mean <clears throat> definitely um Hisok is one of my favorites i think uh i mean he the main ones uh torbjorn and I, i mean so many people love miraculous so i gotta love hawk moth zhongli i'm 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 falling more in love with thanks to all these fans <laughs> <laughs> well i like john i love playing zhongli he's a lot of fun but i mean and i but i will Some say, say that he's rising in popularity <laughs> Is that? Oh, <laughs> is that... yeah. God damn it, Eddie, you're making... taking Corey's job. <laughs> I'm trying to behave over. I'm trying to let him talk. <laughs> Sorry, I'll shut up. I will say the, uh, I think the most fun, uh, most fun I ever had on a show, though, was uh, a show called Glitter Force, which yes, is. I uh, Glitter Force. Wow. Thank you for mentioning yeah, that. Force. Oh my God, uh, Glitter Force, it's on uh, Netflix. It was a Saban uh, rehash of a show called Pretty Cure, an anime. 
And I got to play three out of the four villains and constantly argue with myself. And I've never, <laughs> oh I've never had more fun. Even watching the show, there's so many lines that were just improv lines, not just, I mean, for me, for sure, but even from the other actors that absolutely made it in. And I can tell every time I hear one, I'm like, oh, that was, that was made up. <laughs> and it's just, it's, it's so much fun. So if you haven't checked out Glitter Force, uh, you definitely should check it out. It is so, if you like magical girl shows with a hint of comedy, uh, check that one out. Mm -hmm. Now I'm curious because you're kind of bringing up all your characters and all like, you know, the acting choices. Is there a specific character that you feel like is like you as a person or like a character that's like complete opposite of you as a person? Like, do you have like those two characters where you're like, oh yeah, I'm definitely this character or, oh no, the last character I would ever be in real life is this one. And Just to kind of like see what you're, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I've played a number of characters who are very opposite of who I am. I mean, like, you know, Johan Lieber from Monster or even Hisoka is so, so different. I mean, he, he just oozes this confidence and like that, that it, I don't know, he's just so, so different than me. Um, but I don't know how many, I think the ones that I played that are most like me are probably the, probably the least known because that's something I might do for an, an extra character or I pull from parts of myself. But I don't know how often I get the opportunity to just like, yeah, just be you. Just be you, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know who's like me. I mean, Zhongli, I'm sure. I is think Mr. Like R3 was the most like part. you. Wait, what? Mr. R3 was the most like you. Mr. R3? Yeah, in Dino Girl Go Go. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we were in that together. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I was like, who's Mr. Oh, yes, yes. Just like me. <laughs> exactly. Just like you. You're exactly like that robot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I am the robot guy. Yes. Right. <laughs> Come down, children. Yeah. Um, I so mean, which character was the most challenging to voice? Oh, that's that's easy for me, I think. Sorry, Chris. <clears throat> I mean, sorry. Yeah. If, if we're not talking about um, vocally difficult <laughs> to to do, if we're just talking about the most challenging, uh, I'd say it was uh, Johan from from Monster. Um, Johan's mm. a sociopath. He's a lot higher pitched than I am. He's very disconnected uh, and sounds very kind of disconnected and indifferent to so many things. I mean, he's a sociopath, a murderer. He's just, he's not a good guy. And he's, <laughs> and I remember recording, like uh, Patrick Seitz was the director on that series. Huh. And um, anybody who's worked with me knows like you between takes, I, I mean, I love I goofing around, making jokes. Say. I'm you know, sure. laughing it off and then but jumping back into character. And so with Patrick, I started doing that and immediately it felt wrong and it felt like I was cheating the character because I could I could do the voice of the character, but I was mentally trying to put myself in this space, this horrible space where the character Jeez. lived. And uh, mm. it was really difficult to get back into that space if I let myself jump out that far. Mm. So uh, I could do the voice, but I just felt like I'm cheating right now I want to like feel it like I want internally to be like because I feel like that comes through if mm -hmm. that makes sense with some characters some characters you know are so up there and fun you know like Vector the Crocodile it's it, I don't have to strain emotionally to do that you know what I mean but um but for Johan it, it, it just didn't feel legitimate if I if I wasn't in that place so I had to say I'm sorry mm -hmm. I'm not upset I'm not mad I'm not in a bad mood and it's going to seem uncomfortable because you're like what's with Keith but uh, I'm just going to kind of stay in this space while we record. I have another question. What was the hardest word to pronounce in this game? Like, because <laughs> we've all joked about that. And like, sometimes it's just really hard. <laughs> Do you remember no. like a moment where you're like, oh my goodness, I want to just like it's, chuck the threat. <laughs> it's always the same word. It's yep. always the same word. I mean, most of these other ones, Chi Sing and all this, I can get them. Like, I'll just get a reminder. And then, uh, strangely enough, I'll have a, a, a paragraph with like eight or 12 of, of these names that are so difficult to pronounce. And I'll nail all of them except for Leo. Yes. Leo. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's oh, my God. God. Always. That's, 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 that damn name. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> you, you get it, though. You, you've gotten it. You've gotten it over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. The... You, guys, yeah. you guys helped me get it. But it's, uh, it's funny because... A lot of the other ones, like if I mispronounce them, I'm very aware that I've mispronounced it. But with uh, Liwa, it's like, no, no, I didn't even know. It sounded fine to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're so yeah, brave. It's... You said it twice. I'm like, I'm so in awe of you. 
<laughs> no, I'm like, I'll never say that word again out loud if I can't help it. I'm like That's so good. petrified of getting it wrong. Yeah, it's right. funny because when we first it's when we first started doing it, they were like, "All right, the pronunciation is Leia," and I'm like, "Leia." They're like, "No." They're like, "Leia." I'm like, "Leia." They're like, "No." I'm like, "I'm saying what you're saying." <laughs> like it was it just drove me nuts. But after but after a uh, like a solid year of recording, you know, uh, I've finally figured it out, and I can help people sometimes get there. But uh, you know, it's it's a tricky word. So tricky. Mostly, mostly it's tricky, I think, because we want to bridge it with a W, right? Yeah. We want to say yeah. Li and then the Wa uh, versus going straight from a U into an E. So Li versus Li So it's yeah. just something that you got to wrap, you know, kind of train your mouth to, to around, you know what I mean? One year to record Genshin. Yes, we're still recording Genshin. We're Dude. not done. I go in Ongoing. tomorrow. I have a session tomorrow for Genshin. I actually have a question because yeah, I didn't know this, it. Keith. I I didn't know this, but I I saw you post a tweet, oh. and and oh. it seemed to be near and dear to me here, which was, are you a Magic the Gathering fan? Because I was thrilled and excited to think that you might be. I know I hate the game. I can't stand it. I think everyone who plays is a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, I never, it. never meet your heroes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been playing since 1994. Um, yes. I have a massive collection, and um, and I'm. It's one of the things. I mean, there's plenty to miss right now during COVID, but I mean, I, I literally have not had a game with anybody since March or something like that. <clears throat> um, and we have a. Well, I mean, some of you. I'll, I'll go quickly through this because if you don't play, you won't know. But Chris, you play, right? So. Oh yeah. yeah. So here's what I have. This is what I this is what I offer and and Chris you're invited as soon as as soon as we can do this. Oh my uh, god. You know, safely. <clears throat> what I've done is you know what a cube is? Cube play uh -huh. is when, yep. yep. when you randomly throw uh, a bunch of cards into a box and you kind of, you know, make your decks out of that. So what I have is I have a massive I just call it the box. What it is, it's it's one of virtually every card that has ever come out for Magic. I mean everything. Wow. Or, Holy whether crap. It's Black Lotus, Lightning Bolt, whatever. They're they're all in there. <clears throat> up to date, up to today. And um and we 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 do a group games out of that. And it's a it's a That's slightly amazing. different style of playing. We everybody gets a commander to use. It is so much fun because you're you're literally literally pulling from randomly. You don't make a deck, you actually randomly draw from this box. And you can get anything. <laughs> That's amazing. And the fun thing That's is if so you great. if you pull like a like a famous card like a Sarah Angel. That's the oh, yeah. only Sarah Angel in the entire, like, out of 20, 30,000 cards. I think it's like 30,000. You pulled that out. Are they and all mixed up? Fun. They're all mixed up. Oh, you have no God. idea what you're going to pull. Everything's in there. Every planeswalker, every, everything that can be. And I have all the tokens on the side. So if you make tokens, I've got the tokens for you. Like, literally a oh, giant box of tokens. God. All <laughs> sorted in alphabetical order so you can find them quickly. Um, and anything you might search for, I have on the side. So if you get a card that says you know, sacrifice this or whatever to search for a particular dragon or a particular planeswalker. Trust me, I additionally have that planeswalker alphabetically on the side. Holy <laughs> so crap. That's so amazing, like, dude. It is so much fun to play. I won't get now, more into it than that, but it is, it is a now how now, No, wait, hold on a second. So how, what, how big is this box that you have for it? It's, I it's mean, not, is it like, is it one of those cards, like those 5,000, you know, yeah. card you know, deck box? You know the long ones, the longest yeah. you can get. I think it's, I want to say it's 900 or something like that in there, or maybe it's more. But I have like 28 of those in a K, oh. in, a, in a cover, basically. Oh, oh my, my God. God. I also saw you had a couple alpha packs in the background of that. Uh... No, 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 no alpha packs. I have a sealed pack from every magic set, um, starting from Unlimited. Wow. I don't have Alpha Beta, but I have um, you know, everything else. Unlimited, Antiquities, Arabian Nights, Dude, that's you know, amazing. Legends. Holy Jesus. You know, that is amazing. Dark, all the way up all the way up uh, continuing to you know today, basically. Now Did you... oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say I saw you got I saw you got the, the Walking Dead crossover cards. Did you already receive those? Because I haven't gotten mine yet. I, I got it uh, about three days ago, three or four days ago. Oh, oh maybe uh uh, maybe Monday. Monday. I might have got it Monday. Um, yeah, that is three or four days ago, Keith. I don't know. It's COVID time. I don't know what day it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I hear you. That's fair. 
they, they're nice. They're cool. I, I usually don't get things like secret drop because it's just reprints and I have all the yeah, cards. Sure, sure, and sure. It, it's enough. I spend enough money. I don't need to get like, oh, that's a cool new artwork. Like, I don't need that because I can't afford that. <laughs> but uh, these were brand new cards based on the Walking Dead characters. There's six of them. So I had oh, to get wow. those because they're in the big box, too. Oh, man. that's amazing. And there's six of them. So if you pull one of those Walking Deads, the odds were really low. <laughs> but very cool. When it happens, you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe I drew this. So, What about the My Little Pony set? Did you get that? You know what? I, I didn't. I didn't get that. And I didn't get uh, – didn't they do like a Dungeons & Dragons one or a, or a Transformers or so? They did a couple of Take other things. Take it a Dungeons yeah. & Dragons one. I'm going to have to buy that. And I don't even play Magic the Gathering. <laughs> yeah. Well – the only well, cards that can make uh... it in there are the ones that don't kind of work in the box. There are ones that just do kind of weird. Like, you know, the uncracked and unglued and un... Oh, yeah, you know, those yeah, 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 cards. yeah. So about 70% of those are in the box. But some of these cards make you do weird things like balance a card on your head or... Right, I don't know. Right, right, just, right, they're, just, right. they're fun to play, but it's not the style that we try to play. So the ones that are really weird, like that, that force you to rhyme or sing or, or do a rap or something, those are not in there. But oh, okay. But, like, there's a creature that has jeans walk, so if your opponent's wearing jeans, you can attack without them being able to block you. Like, that's in there. <laughs> that's it's, it's amazing. Goofy, oh my God. But it's reasonable. <laughs> it's reasonably that's... goofy. They, did they, uh, they, just, they just came out with the uh, Bob Ross set of basic lands where they used Bob Ross paintings for the, the lands. They looked that's beautiful. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. See, I, won't, I won't get those, but I love them. I, I can appreciate them. I just, I'm like, yeah, I got to draw the line somewhere. Somewhere. Well, I got I got a My Little Pony set for you when when things return back. I to actually normal. just got the question of who's your favorite My Little Pony. For for you? Like no, for you. They want to know what a your Applejack. favorite. Applejack. Yeah, Applejack. Applejack. I'm surprised you even know any dude. <laughs> uh, I have a nine year old and a five year old girl. That would be why. <laughs> like I was yeah. say, yeah. I also... So you're not a brony yourself, is what you're saying. That's a lie. Well, He's totally a brony. I'm, I'm not. Uh, well, he's just using, I, I don't know. He's I, just using his children as a front. I'm not a clopper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got, I got another uh, request, and then I got another question. They're requesting for a speed wagon line, and then also the question was asked: What was it like to voice uh, Lupin, and did you feel any pressure from voicing a character that was so iconic? Uh. Uh, how, okay, I'm sorry, that was two different things. Yes. Uh, so, okay, I'll, I'll go with Lupin first. Um, yeah. So for me, I long before I was doing voiceover, I was a fan of Lupin the Third. Um, they, I just used to watch the movies all the time. I, I just loved it. Uh, so I, and and you know, I kind of grew up on Tony Oliver voicing Lupin. So uh, I, I never thought the opportunity would present itself, and it never even crossed my mind. And uh, when I got an, I got an email. And, uh, you know, from Bang Zoom, and they said they were going for something a little bit different. And they wanted, you know, Lupin. I read for Lupin, and I read for Jigen. And um, and I was like, okay, this is so weird. But I'm like, well, I know this character. And I, it, I you know what? That's funny. Uh, you asked if I, uh, who was kind of like me. And with Lupin, I actually was kind of like, you know what? The way I see the character, he happens to be the greatest thief, you know, in the world. But he's always kind of blundering. It, he's he's a lot more attitude than. It's a weird thing because he's he's very good, but he always screws something up along the way. And if it weren't for his pals, he wouldn't quite complete things. That's kind of part of every movie, you know what I mean? He kind of screws up. Something goes wrong. Somebody helps him. But in the end, he's badass and he makes it work. And I'm like, I, I can be that. That feels like me. I blunder here and there, but I make it work. Um. So anyway, I got. I remember getting the email back that said that I had booked, you know, Lupin, and I read through the whole thing with, like, no expression on my face, and then went back and right back to the top because I'm like, I definitely read that wrong. Let me read that again. Hmm. And then I, hmm. like, this big smile grew on my face, like, ah, wait, 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 wait. And I had to, like, I had to read it over and over and over to be like, I'm not Jigen. I mean, Jigen would have been great. I would have been blown away with that. But, like, I'm voicing Lupin? Like, I couldn't believe that. So, uh, That's amazing. I've been, Honored, I've done three movies so far as him, and uh, you know, hopefully, I know the last one ended on a cliffhanger. Who knows? Um, but uh, hopefully, will that'll happen again, and uh, lightning will strike a fourth time for me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's awesome.
Um, then somebody wanted some speed wagon. Um, yes. I'm trying to think of a speed wagon line. Oh my god, my memory banks. Uh, allow me to elucidate you. The name's speed wagon. Robert E. O. Speed wagon. I can't. I mean, I can't really remember a line, but there he is. <laughs> like, it felt like a line, right? Kind of. You know, his his most popular line that he said the most was actually, uh, "JoJo." <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, funny enough, I think the last time I worked with you in person, Keith, was Lupin. Was it? On the on the last one? Was it the last On the one? last, on whatever the last thing we did was, and it was at, it was at some studio, it was through Bang Zoom, but it was at like... Different studio, right, right. It was at a different studio, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, and I was very happy to see that, to see the film, because when it finally came out and I saw it, uh, it tied the other two films before it together with a villainous yeah. plot. And it hinted that there was more to come. Like, there was, like, at the end, there was, like, some island where they had been creating all these villains that we've been battling for the last, you know, th three movies. So yeah. I feel like I can be fairly confident they're planning on continuing that storyline, because that's a weird way to end it. So I, I got mean, excited when it ended. Like, as yeah. if Lupin is ever going to go away. No, 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 but... but Lupin, yeah. I'm assuming Lupin will go away for me at some point. Um, a number of other very talented actors have played Lupin. I personally still think of Tony Oliver, like I said. He's he's Lupin to me. I'm honored, and I like the work that I've done as Lupin. I'm, I'm proud of it. Um, but I, I don't have any aspirations of, like, taking over. I don't, I don't see that happening. I don't expect it, and nor am I looking forward to that. I'm just looking forward to riding this wave on the films which are a little more action a little more adult it, it's uh, it's almost until, like yeah. that alternate x-men universe kind of thing where like one universe is like the wacky go lucky you know like scooby-doo style lupon and then you have the <laughs> the you know the little bit darker side of of the the lupon universe yeah yeah, and and it, there's still some uh, goofiness to to my Lupin oh, yeah. as well, but Absolutely. not as much. It's not it's not written that way. And then when it gets serious, it gets it gets pretty serious. Mm -hmm. um, but I but I love that. I I actually like that as a fan too. I actually I like both styles of. I don't think they they. I think they can both exist. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was I was very very not surprised, but I was very pleasantly happy with with seeing like the 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 alternate. Universe Lupin, because I was very, I totally grew up with Tony as Lupin, uh, you know, in my head. So it was, it was really interesting to see like a whole new cast and everyone was just so good. So I was like, wow, this is, this is really cool. It's like, you know, th these things can exist and everything's cool about it. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was really happy with all, with all the performances. Um, I thought Christina was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Warren as Jigen was, was great. Like, I, I really, I enjoyed everyone. Um, so as, like I said, it was interesting because as an actor, who's a fan, like I got to enjoy it both ways. Like, because I, separately I'm a fan. So I, just like anybody else, I could critique and be like, Oh, I don't like the voice for so-and-so. Oh, why did they? Because I grew up on other voices. Um, you, you got to have your cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question: What was the most vocally stressful line you've ever done? Jeez. Vocally and you don't have to do it. Oh. No, <laughs> yeah, <Wow>. totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure it was just screaming of some sort. I can tell you, strangely enough, one of the most vocally stressful sessions I had. Uh, years ago, I worked on uh, Fisher Price Little People uh, when they were doing like claymation show, short, shorts, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. And I got, I, <laughs> it's funny because my audition, I auditioned to play like like animals and, and other things like background type things. And, uh, and so at the audition, I actually did as realistic as I could animal sounds. That's what they asked for. And I got cast and I came in and then all the animal sounds were super cartoony. I mean, not even like real land. Like I did a bear and I, I, I made him like a real bear, but they were like, no, 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 no. You know, everybody's got to be, this is for kids. So this bear comes by juggling on a unicycle. So I had him like humming and like, it was totally different. It wasn't like, I don't know how I got cast because it was nothing like the audition, but, but I played all, every vehicle, every animal. Um, and then a few like Freddie, the frog. But anyway, I, I did this, like, this was early in my career. And I think I did like a six or seven hours set, like a way too long session. Let's put it that way. 
like later in my career, I'd be like, why are we doing this long a session? <laughs> like, uh, like, that's not okay. Um, but they, they really worked me really hard for these animal sounds that ended up being so far in the background. And I remember going home that <laughs> night and being like so sore from coming up with 42 different like, you know, animal and vehicle voices. Holy crap. It was, yeah, oh it was my God. such a lot. But it, but none of them on their own were particularly were vocally stressful. It was just like, oh my god, just just work. And it was filling scenes. So you know when you do Walla basically, and you're filling the whole, yeah. they're mm -hmm. still playing in the background. And then they barely used any of it. And I thought, oh my wow. god, that's they, I I lost my voice for like three days, and you can't even you hear it like twice. <laughs> you know, oh, I find no. that that's the true with pretty much all vocally stressful stuff. Like you know, like I've played Call of Duty uh, plenty of times, and uh, and worked on the Call of Duty mobile game, and they and you know obviously a lot of those realistic war games want like super realistic screams and stuff. They are so faded in the background. You might hear one guy go, ah, like yeah, at some point, but it's not like front and center. And people end up killing themselves over stuff like that. Oh my God. There was a, um, yeah, there was a war game that I did. And I can't remember, I can't remember right now what it was called, but it was something. And you guys know, like even sitting and waiting for your session can actually wear you out if you have to yep. wait a long time. And uh, oh, yeah. I got there at my scheduled time. They had me wait for like a half an hour. They brought me up. It was an actor still finishing. That actor went for an hour Ooh. while I sat and watched. It was interesting, but it was also, you know, like, you know, it just, it's, it doesn't sound like that would wear you out, but it kind of does because you were ready to go. Your energy yep. was up. So now I'm sitting, I'm watching this. And then uh, I know Yuri Lowenthal also was there and he, he showed up and he had another gig coming up. And and so I was being a nice guy because he showed up also, yeah. and he had less lines. And no. uh, and uh, I said, "Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead." And I, I let him go. So then I had to sit for like an hour of his session. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh man! Oh. Before they got to me, I think the only and then it was all screaming. And I think the only saving grace was, I think right after. And I think Yuri was burnt out too. I think when he left, he was like, "Damn, you know, kind of." That was a lot. And I think after he left, if I remember right. They were like, why are we doubling up on some of these lines? And like, we didn't even need to do all these things with Yuri. And I was like, oh. And, and so they, so then when with mine, they were like, yeah, you don't have to do this, this other 20 pages. And I was like, thank God. I still had to do a lot. But yeah. not as much. Wow. <laughs> so it kind of worked out, you know, faithfully. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Well, yeah, it is. Three hours of waiting, but yeah. <laughs> did, did, you, did you bill him for it? <laughs> I wish I could have, but no. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I got wasn't going to make a fuss. I got the question. Um, what was the best part about voicing Shido in uh, in Persona Five? Oh, he was a jerk. What are you talking about? That was, <laughs> that was totally the best part. I got to be uh, Shido drunk. I got to be, sh you know, just normal Shido a hole, and uh, and he was fun. There's nothing. Well, I don't know if there's nothing more fun, but it's it's pretty fun to let yourself go and just be an a hole. It really yeah. is, and then it, when you're allowed to, when it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I was gonna say I do that every day on my own, but I don't think people. Like <laughs> oh it. my god. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's Celest your choice. <laughs> Celestial Saf says, uh, "Have you ever watched Dongan Rampa? And if so, what do you think about it?" Uh, the the actual series, as opposed to the games where I voiced. I assume they're asking. Yeah. yeah I never good. say, "Aren't you in the? Aren't you in the games?" I'm in the games. Uh, Eddie, you might have recorded me uh, for it. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I might have. Was. Yeah. I was like, wait, this kind of sounds familiar. I've never seen the series, but to be fair, I've never played the games either. I've seen pieces of the games. I've watched scenes. Um, <clears throat> I saw my death in it. That was important to me to watch that. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. The weird thing about Danganronpa is that uh, there's a lot of fans of Mondo Awada and of that um, those video games. That style. And uh, I literally, I went in, I think I recorded for, uh, maybe I had a two hour session for the first game. And then the second game, he came back, like, I don't know what it was, seven years later in a sequel or something. And it was like an hour session for that. So wow. for as, as many fans as there are of that game and that they come up and they go, oh, my God, you're Mondo. And I love it. I, I totally appreciate it. But it's so weird to me because I, like, literally spent less than three hours of my life on that character. And I, it, I get so much appreciation. I mean, I'm thankful. But I kind of wish I had more time with that character. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel the mm. same way about my character in Kakegurui. There's so many people that's like, you're Yumi? I love that character. I'm like, she literally has four lines in the whole thing. <laughs> four lines. <laughs> and I'm right, like, right. okay, but you love her. Cool. That's because you are so good. I guess that's so. That's why. 
<laughs> oh, like actually, I got a question like about that tree. earlier. Was it was it Zhang Li's meteor that killed all the dinosaurs? I like that question. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I don't. Listen, I could answer that because I know the actual answer, but um, I don't want to infringe upon people's rights to believe what they want to believe. I know a lot of people that still don't believe in evolution. <laughs> so uh, you guys, I don't want to crush people's religious dreams or, you know what I mean? Like just hey, whatever you think things. is the truth is the truth. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> uh, the cult of Zhongli is growing and it has just been enabled by you. I hope you're okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Paimon has a cult, so it's only fitting that also yeah. Zhongli would also have a cult. So uh, I actually have, have a question for all, all of the voice actors. Um, it was, if you could voice any show or game that you haven't voiced, what would it be? Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Sailor Moon, all of us, uh, uh, obviously. Yeah. But I'm actually in Sailor Moon, yeah. so that's a little. Like, I talked I to her, and I love Sailor Venus, and she also has Artemis. Um, Sailor is Venus is Buddha the best one, so I'm glad Sailor you chose Moon. that one. Which one? Um, uh, Sailor Venus is the best Sailor Scout. So. Yeah, that that's my personal opinion. That's why yeah. Yeah, I love her. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, Spider-Man for me. Any kind of Spider-Man. A game or or show 100 percent, no questions is that Boom. is that um being the voice of spider-man or just being a part of a spider-man the franchise uh the the voice of spider-man specifically um i, mean, I would love to be, be any enough. yeah a, any i mean obviously if i got to be anything within the spider-man universe or marvel in general i'd be like dead on the ground uh then i wouldn't be able to do the gig so that'd be bad but you know <laughs> right <laughs> but the actual like peter parker slash spider-man in case you didn't know uh who, who spider-man was people uh but yeah whoa whoa Spoiler. oh god oh geez are you telling and peter parker is spider-man all this time what? get me parker <laughs> what are you saying that guy is so scrawny there's no way <laughs> if i got to be j jonah jameson that'd be great city. Dude, he's I just that. found out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, I got to play Hammerhead. Uh, I, I'm never going to play Spider-Man, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> you just don't have the chops for it. Oh, not that's the right choice for Spider-Man. No, it's, it's just true, though. But uh, but I was happy to do uh, Hammerhead in the Spider-Man on... Uh, yeah, that's really cool. Oh, man. Well, uh, also, uh, the, I think you and Corey both have dabbled in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle universe, have you not? <laughs> yeah. What did you do me, in that? Me in, very in, loosely. Um, I got to play as, as Master Splinter in, in the Smite crossover. Uh, so that was really cool. That sounds um, super cool. Yeah, what 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 did you? I don't even know. I feel bad. Oh, you, it's okay. No reason you don't need to know. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you, but yes, now please. We're, we're talking about it. Yes. Um, I played uh, Kirby O'Neill. I played April's dad in the uh, oh. Nickelodeon uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, not the current one, but the one that was just before it, the was first that, Nickelodeon reboot. Um, was that the the CG animated one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh man, that that was actually that was a great that was a great series. <laughs> It was a good series. I got to turn yeah. into a uh, man bat, right? Or a man or a batman or a bat, whatever it was. I turned into a bat. <laughs> you turned into My Batman? Bat. That's the craziest crossover I could think of. Yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> it happened. It was crazy. It was very painful, but it, it happened. <laughs> oh, man. I, I Yeah, I, I would have loved to have... Uh, I, I wasn't even voice acting at that point, so... But <laughs> that, was, I know that's they, a, that was a great time. They told me they were looking for you, and I said, I'm sorry, he's not even voice acting right now. Yeah, and that's... Said, All right. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I have to indulge a little bit because uh, actually the first time I ever met you was at a, a random con and I'm sure you didn't know who I was just because I was uh, one of the cosplayers at a an Overwatch cosplay thing dressed as Hanzo like some dork Amazing. Uh, but you had stopped by I think it was after before uh, an Overwatch panel at uh -huh. a San Diego Comic Con and you just said hi to everyone and I think it meant a lot to everyone there uh, so that was like a really cool experience Oh, that's very cool. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah I, I, my favorite thing when I go to cons anyway is uh, the cosplay. I just love It's just such a great element. Uh, and I think the one I would miss the most if that didn't happen at a con, I would be like, what is going on? Why is no one cosplaying? I love that. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, uh, I, and, and it's tough. It's, it's not easy to do. It takes a lot of work. And uh, yeah. you're always preparing your, your cosplay. So, I mean, I have a, a mad appreciation for it, too. So. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. It varies from year to year too. You just, sometimes you see more or less. And, and obviously with COVID, you know, we're not seeing anything and that's super sucky. And it, it the unfortunate stifling of creativity was what this, this whole situation is. And hopefully people can still keep doing it though. You know, it's an well, interesting thing because it's, it's a stifling of creativity, but at the same time, I feel like entertainment is, is, a salvation that's kind of picked up here. In Absolutely. The, uh, yeah, that's true. Too. So it's, in some regards, it's kind of like a, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a golden age for a lot of stuff. That's just, well, we, of- yeah. We, Cause we have to adapt to the new need. Right. And that's, uh, yeah. Plus I feel like with, um, especially with like TikTok, I do feel like a lot of cosplayers are like finding a larger audience doing like videos on TikTok. So Actually, I feel like, like that's, one of the main things I have right now is like join TikTok, have have Keith join TikTok, and I'm like, knowing how he just had a trouble dealing with Discord, I don't think he can know how to like work. TikTok. I am I am so happy with Instagram and Twitter and, and I Facebook. did put I'm up your totally Twitter fun. on my on my Thanks screen, so that way, guys, if you want to follow his social media, his Twitter is right there, and then he also nice. has an Instagram too. So that's yeah. where you can follow him for his for his socials. Um, and then I appreciate it. He, Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's so funny. And then I, <laughs> I love that that was your response. Yeah. <laughs> um, You're like, guys, that's such a lovely thought, but that's going to be a pass. <laughs> TikTok is so crazy because, like, you know, with, with the Genshin announcement, Karina, like, like, you got like a hundred thousand followers or something like yep, almost overnight day. or something crazy. In Amazing. To the, to the point where I had people that I haven't talked to in like literally over ten years message me, being like, "Hey, is this you in this video with this with the with the with the with the voice, the, the voice of Paimon from Genshin Impact?" And I'm like, "Oh no." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith, I got a question for you. Okay. Uh, somebody's asking, uh, where was, I'm guessing it's Bass, is it Bass or Bass? But where That's, was Bass during the I Double Gear plot? And more importantly, how'd you feel about, uh, how to fe- how'd you feel to voice the Doc? I th- we're talking I think about it's a Mega Man. Is this I think a Mega Man? Man? I, I believe it, I believe I it is Bass. Bass. Is it Bass? Is it Bass? Uh, <laughs> Bass slash, uh, Forte, if you want to go by... The weeb I don't, lingo. <laughs> the I, don't weeb know, lingo. I don't know what the base part is, but clearly I know we're talking about Dr. Wiley and uh, and uh, Mega Man, the last Mega yeah. Man. Uh, it was great. That was, a, again, an honor. Look, I grew up on so many of these franchises, so I kind of geek out a bit when I get an opportunity to, to work on one of them, and, uh, and that was no exception. I used to play all the early Mega Mans, and, uh, and I got so frustrated playing them because they're so hard. Yeah. And, yes. uh, and the, the tunes would play in my head, and I literally wrote lyrics and would sing along. Wow. That's to amazing. The song. Hold on. Well, well now the... I need to hear about these lyrics. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, well, I want I a demonstration if you can many. remember any of them. I, I only remember one. Saying, this is so bleeping hard the well, entire nope. time. <laughs> I want to hear that one you remember. Please sing it. Here's the only one I remember now. I don't have the tune playing in my head, so it's going to sound like crap. But the lyrics that I remember is. Um, Wait, hold on. Let me see. I think it was something like, um, it's the log man and this, it's probably Woodman. This is his log jam and he <laughs> is going to bend you over the log pile. That's what I remember. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that's amazing. That's so what? good. Oh God, that's so good. Um, Here's the thing though. I had song, I had lyrics for all of them. I just don't, Remember that now. <laughs> so, um, Keith, because you actually told us earlier what your first voice acting job, somebody actually asked for everybody else, what was everybody else's also first voice acting job? And for Eddie, I guess that would be your first engineering job. Uh, well, my first and for Chris, first that would be your first directing job. <laughs> oh, well, my, oh. mine's easy. My first engineering job was double main directing. Um, Ooh, nice. And I found out literally as I walked into the building. Wait, so, hold yeah. on. Tell them how they found you, Eddie. Oh, so, hmm, they f- they didn't find me. They found my dad and then contacted <laughs> the wrong me. Eddie. Oh they, my god, that's great. They were trying that's to contact amazing. his dad and they contacted him instead. They they pr- I think they I, I think it may have been a little 
different. Like, that's just how it works in my head. It's probably a little different than that. But I just remember kind of being there. And I think my my, my dad went with me that, uh, you know, like the first day anyways. Um, and we pretty, we pretty much ended up like tag team, teaming the project. Um, but I remember going in and no one, neither of us knew what, what was going on. But we were walking in and there, you know, it was, uh, it was uh, Kumi and Mari from Rouge. Um, and they were so, so, gosh, so freaking nice. Like some of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And um really great people to work with um and they were like yeah so we're you know we're doing this this thing the series is called devil may cry and me being a uh die hard um fan of the devil may cry series um i'm not gonna say i had to change my pants but, uh, <laughs> but he had to change his pants but he had to change his pants <laughs> <laughs> all right chris what was your first directing job my first directing job boy uh i i i want to i don't know i think my first directing job was dead island 2 which at the time was being developed by jaeger uh and i worked on that with uh with a bunch of folks and um and then they got taken over by gosh what was the developer uh they got taken over by i think damber uh, no, sorry, Dan Buster Studios. Um, and so, like, Dead Island 2, I worked on it, and it was, like, took forever before they were kind of acquired, reacquired, and then they just completely kind of redid everything, like, game-wise. And it took years after that. So it's funny, because I had been directing for, like, a solid, like, five, six years before, like, they had announced Dead Island 2 is coming out, and I'm thinking to myself, like, <laughs> how funny it was that it's so long down the line uh, from, from what I originally had done. So just it was, it was kind of interesting. All right, Bonus, what was your first voice acting job? Uh, it was for Dying Light 2 at the E3 premiere back in 2018. That was uh, really crazy. I got to do that. I got to play a lot of zombies, a lot of the uh, thugs that get beat up, and the dude who got lit on fire. Hmm. And was all seen <laughs> at E3. It was amazing. I loved it. Christy! What was your so first? technically, like when I was in high school, my parents' friend hit me up for some reason to do a voiceover for a podcast that is, I think, probably still on iTunes for the Goethe Institute. And like, I remember them coming over to my house and I was just like sitting in the dining room recording this stuff that's mostly in German. And like, I don't speak German and it was just super weird. And I felt super awkward and was like, I don't know. And I did not do any voice acting for a long time after that. And then I picked it up again. And the first uh, job that I cried over booking was a like, commercial for Seattle Death Coffee. So, oh, that was nice. Kind of cool. Nice. Yeah, we got, cool. Um, oh, lovely. We got, we got a Kagi in the group, in the hey, chat oh, here. Oh, we got hey, a Kagi. All right, what's up? Um, Corey, what was... Thank you for the raid. Um, Corey, what was um, your first voice acting job? Uh, uh, first voice acting job for me was a buddy of mine who was developing a mobile game, and they needed an actor to be a bunch of Vikings in it. It's a game called Viking Remix Madness. It was a mobile nice. game. I have no idea if it's still around. And uh, I was like all four of the Viking dudes, and they tried to get me as the Valkyrie chick. Didn't work out. So, uh, you know, can't really do the... <laughs> The female voice is very well. Two. Top two yeah, yeah, they were like, why can't you do this? I'm like, because uh, <laughs> I can't. All right, uh, Kagi, you're here, yeah. us after. So what was and, your and, first voice wait, acting job? Wait, oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, no, 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 I'm going to hear this first. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so wait, what was the question? I'm sorry, I'm eating cheesecake. Um, oh, my God. First, first voice acting job, and how dare you eat cheesecake without sharing with me? Um, Did you order Tommy? It's baklava cheesecake. That sounds delicious. Oh, so good. oh, did you go to did you go to Rodini Park? Please, of course I did. <laughs> well, I first voice acting job. What was it, Kagi? Oh, my first job. Yeah, first voice um, acting job. Uh, I'm trying to think. It's between. I think it's between like two, but like my first voice acting job, apart from like. Uh, uh, a thing my friend asked me to do one time was uh, <laughs> there was this visual novel. Uh, I shit you not, this is what it's called. Uh, it's called Seduce Me. Yes! <laughs> nice! I was just about to ask if it was a sexy novel. I'm gonna look uh, it and up it's now. About, and it's about Incubi, which is a, a male. Uh, what the fuck are they called? Succubus. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I was one of the uh, one of the boys you could like romance or whatever. You were seduce. one of the boys. Or get seduced by. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, pretty much. Or you seduce Love them. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I wanted to. Uh, I want to. It's getting kind of late. I know uh, Keith is is quite busy, so I, I want to. You know, I want to give it the last five. I'm gonna flick the lights here. We got probably five minutes before uh, I let the man hit 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 the sack. So. Mm -hmm. Um, Keith, I can't thank you enough for being on here. It's been such a pleasure. Ah, uh, what, what? Mm, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think my first. Uh, what was that again? I'm sorry. What? Uh... Yeah, first voiceover. <laughs> first no, this, I would actually this like to great. know, Keith. What was your first anime gig you got? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So I think the first anime gig was actually with Bang Zoom. And I think it was, here's the thing. It was one of two things that I'm not positive. I think it was Samurai Champloo is what I think it was. Wow. Um, I show. think. Wow. Good gig. Good show. Yeah, well, it was a small, it was like a small, small part. Um, I was like a pi yeah. pinwheel peddler or something. Like you never see his face. He just kind of spookily whispers something into the wind or something. Uh, I think that was the first, because the, there was a few things, but I do remember... It might have been that. It might have been something else. But I remember the first time I was in there, whatever I was going in to do, uh, Kirk Thornton had brought me in. I had worked with mm. him on something non-anime related <clears throat> and apparently, like, accidentally auditioned for him. I didn't know he directed or anything. I just was – he was another actor there, and I was – he mentioned anime, and I was like, oh, my God, I love anime. There's a guy that talks like this and the guy that – and I'm doing all these voices and stuff, but I, I honestly had no idea <laughs> who he was. So. Um, <laughs> But he brought me in, and uh, and I, w I was sitting on the little couch there, and uh, I came in, and Steve Bloom was just walking out, and he introduced me to Steve Bloom, and uh, and it's funny because I'm I'm walking in about to do my session, and Steve Bloom says, uh, you know, welcome to the world of anime, and I was like, oh, oh cool. <laughs> that was a really good Steve. Like, nice. Yeah, that was a really good Steve. I liked that. <laughs> Um, also, Keith, um, what does it feel like working together? And I assume that means like with people that you know. What's it like uh, to be on projects with people that you know? Uh, you mean like face to face working with? I mean, I I think they mean in general because of course, like in video games, we're oh. never face to face working with each other. <laughs> or ever again. <laughs> yeah, hey, right now with COVID oh, especially. No. It's always cooler, I think. I mean, I like, I don't mind working on my own. Like, I don't mind being in a booth and focusing on my character, but because mm -hmm. there's pluses to that. You know what I mean? There's something to mm -hmm. be said about that also. Yeah. But, you know, there's a camaraderie and just a, an energy feeding off of each other when you get to record in a group read. And uh, I don't get, well, now we're, you know, a lot of us are not getting that opportunity. Um, but obviously, video games, they rarely do that. And uh, anime, they rarely do that, or if ever. So, you know, it's only in kind of original stuff and a few audiobooks. I've done a few audiobooks where I get to read with other actors. And, um, oh, wow. Yeah, I like that. That's I, like, cool. I mean, I, I wouldn't give one up because I like them both, but it's it's great. I love for hearing who else worked. A lot of times I don't know mm -hmm. if we're not there together. Yeah, like, I don't that's know right. That's right. Yeah. But uh, I can't. I can't watch a show or play a game without going, oh, that's so and so. <laughs> oh, she's great. I love her. She's awesome. And this is, you know, it's now it's part of the way I watch these shows. I can't help it. Yeah. <clears throat> I do that or I'll be like, that person's great. Who is that? I got to look it up. I don't yeah. know who that is, but she's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think cool. we all get a little bit like that, really. <laughs> Just being in being in voiceover in general, you know, we I all can't, I couldn't like talk about that. this game at all when, it, when I first started playing it because I was like, hey, that's... Oh, they probably haven't announced. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the tricky part about it. We're all we're all sworn to secrecy, but, um, but yeah, Keith, this has been awesome. I'm glad I got to show you a little bit of Zhang Li here. Um, C six. So, thank you, C six Zhang Li. That's right. That's right. Alejandro, did you get C six yet? Hmm. Did you get C six Zhang Li yet? Yeah, man. Yes. Yeah, right. you did. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Oh, you guys got it. Alejandro, you said you would. I, I, I still got a couple of days. Yeah, too. get it done. <laughs> it, it, um, but I really, wait, wait. really appreciate it. Keith, on, Chris. You, you Chris, what me. does that mean, Yo. Chris? What does that mean? Uh, C6 Zhongli is just hey, 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 all hey. over the place? Let, 
You spend just got off the over a thousand dollars. I a lot of Mora in real life. The, this is C six. This is his constellation. And so, uh, if you remember, uh, if you get if you get two versions of you, you unlock constellation one, three, four, five, six. So you need seven copies of Zhang Li to unlock oh, all okay. C. Yeah, all the constellations. So all right, um, and it can be a little pricey if you're not. It can lucky. be a little pricey, a little pricey if you do that. Or a lot. But that's how much I love your character. That's how much I love you, my man. We got we got C six Zhang Li. Uh, first week it was out. So, uh, but thank you for all that you do. Thank you for rocking so hard in this game. Uh, one final request from somebody. They said that uh, one their little sister's a huge fan of Hawk Moth. From Ladybug, and uh, her name is Hillary. And if you wouldn't mind saying hello to her as Hawk Moth. Mm, okay. I wish they told me what she was into, but yes, let's do this. Um, Hillary, I am Hawk Moth, and I'm giving you the power to do absolutely anything you desire. But first, you have to do something for me. Get me, Ladybug, and Cat Noir's miraculous! That was so cute and was good. Amazing. I love that. Yes. That was amazing. Uh, that's like that. Honest, that I love Ladybug. So good. It's so good. Yeah. The that's fact amazing. that you didn't stumble is what amazed me. Oh, so well, I, he's got I do a lot of I do a lot of akumatizing people. <laughs> I have a lot of requests. <laughs> what can I say? People are like they just go like, "This is my name, and these are my hobbies," and I akumatize them. So. <laughs> so, so yeah. Thanks, man. I really, really appreciate it, man. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, do you have a, a busy one tomorrow? Um, no, I have I have some auditions. I got to wake up because some are due kind of early, and I don't think I'm going to knock them out tonight. So, uh, yeah, it's I my life. some auditions, and um, yeah, hopefully, I think it's going to slow down for. I have some. I have a few things to next week, but uh, I'm I'm looking forward to like a week and a half of kind of yeah, the rest relaxing. doing nothing. Well, nice. I don't ever. That never happens. I mean, I have okay. kids. I mean, <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Yeah. Not really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully I'll get to you know mellow out just a little bit, just a little. Good, good man. Yeah. You deserve it. Uh, well, thank you again so much, and uh, give us a give us an I will have order on your way out. As he kicks me out, folks. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for coming, Keith. Hey, do this for me before you bail, and don't let <laughs> the door hit you in the ass. I, look, you, 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 can, you can stay. You can stay as long as you want. I just I want to be respectful of your time, my man. No, no, it's all good. I I, I should go. I'm I, I'm having fun, and I could easily like forget about time. But oh, later we do on, my every wife night. will be like, I keep on saying I'm gonna away. leave. I'm gonna leave at twelve, and then it's two. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. Yeah. No, that'll kill me for tomorrow. I can't do that much. Yeah. Then I might as well forget the auditions. Like, oh well, <laughs> doesn't matter. I'm gonna sound like shit. I don't need to do it. Doesn't matter. But yeah, we're in yeah. here. We're in here like every night, and you're part of the Discord, so you could literally just pop in and be like, "Hey, anytime you want, just to say hi." And, so and just say just hi and then leave. Yeah. <laughs> right. You yeah. could just literally <laughs> pop in, yell, I, "I will have order," and then just leave right away. <laughs> <laughs> And then someone's like, did someone just activate an ult? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, but yeah. if Chop Suey doesn't do that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, Chris, thanks thanks for inviting me. Uh, this has been a pleasure. Um, I, I may pop in at some point and do that, because why not? And I, I hadn't yeah. really seen the game other than a few shots online, so... It's really cool to see me prance around a fountain. It's very cool. <laughs> 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 And and all that food I delivered. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I know, oh my god! That's a delivery boy. It. I hate that. Gotta make that Mora. If I were a god in real life, that's how I would spend most of my time. Delivery boy. Delivering food. food. Absolutely. Not hey man. <laughs> they 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 are they are gods during this uh, pandemic. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. I can't tell you how much food that's I've true. gotten delivered over the past eight months. That is true. Yes. Let's hear it for them. Okay, everybody. I'll leave you to your own devices. And remember, I will have order. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. And good, good night, night, buddy. Nice Thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.